Welcome to Design Bytes. And I'd like to introduce uh, Uwe Palm, the head of uh, the SAP App House, uh, to talk more about uh, our topic today, future model for innovation and design. Thank you very much, Dan. I'm really glad to be here today. My name is Uwe Palm. I'm head of the App House in Palo Alto. I'm here together with Sally and Bettina, who are going to introduce themselves a little bit later, um, you know, when they start their sessions and we would like to talk about a future model for innovation and design today and we've divided up that session into three different segments um, um, it's actually five here um, but you know when it comes to the presentation it's three so i'm going to kick this off with a brief introduction um, to the app house um, in, in palo alto then uh, I'm going to hand over to Sally, who's going to share out one of our projects with you, specifically the one that we did for yes. Parkland Health and Hospital System. And then Tina is going to close out the presentation with um, talking about um, our hybrid collaboration model in the post-COVID world. Um, and um, we're going to end up the session with a with a Q and A. So please feel free at all times to enter any questions you may have into the chat or you're simply going to wait until we reach that segment at the end where we're going to address your questions um, then in person and uh, with that said um, after um, obviously almost one and a half years um, you know in a in a pandemic um, you know we um, at the app house as a think tank you know we are obviously thinking about how is that collaboration model with our customers going to look like in a post-COVID world. And that was actually the spin-off um, for this um, particular presentation at the App House. And then maybe you want to forward to the next slide. <laughs> um, yeah, here at the here at the App House, um, you know, we are um, we're really um, an innovation team, you know, and if we've been an innovation team for, for a couple of years um, already, and as an innovation team, obviously, we want to look into the future, we want to look at trends, you know, see how trends um, are going to impact, um, you know, us and, um, and the way that we uh, go about our projects. And um, there's been a really nice quote that we got um, from uh, the Fraunhofer Institute in, in Germany, and, um, and I think that quote really, um, you know, hits the sweet spot here that it's been actually exceptional, you know, that we've been, you know, um, you know, in that business of innovation for such a long uh, period of time. And, um, and we're really proud of it. And, you know, one of the things, you know, where we're still relevant, where we're still existing as a team at SAP is simply the fact that we constantly reinvent ourselves and, um, and, you know, hopefully that session and um, the, the message that we're going to send over to you, you know, is going to be an indicator for everyone who participates that, you know, we're, that we're truly innovative and that we keep on um, innovating, um, you know, as a team. Um, we are part of SAP and um, um, within SAP, we are part of the technology and innovation board area. Um, the core of our DNA is really human-centered innovation and to bring that human-centered innovation to all our 400,000 customers. Um, you know, we can do that only obviously one customer at a time. And um, what enables us, you know, to deliver on that vision, you know, is the fact that we are, we are a global team. We are, we are fairly small as SAP overall with 100,000 employees. We are a team of 55 members, but we are uh, distributed um, over different regions. Um, um, and um, obviously I'm from Palo Alto, so is Tina and, and Sally as well, but we do have partner locations, SAP locations in, in New York, at the East Coast here in the United States. It all started in Germany. Um, we have two locations there in Heidelberg in Berlin. And we also have a location in Asia, which is in Seoul. Those are the five SAP locations. Um, and uh, what we do is we're, we're scaling this App House idea of co-innovating with our customers through um, an App House network of partners. 
um, where we have um, onboarded partners um, adding uh, to our five app house locations an additional 21 partner app house locations, which um, as a total form, what we call the app house network. And as you can see, we have fairly impressive statistics um, as to what we have accomplished um, as an app house network. We've um, hosted roughly 3000 design thinking workshops, um, done more than 1000 customer projects, produced a lot of customer stories um, alone in 2020, 38. And um, in addition to all this, we've been uh, recognized, you know, by the industry with uh, 40 design awards. And we're truly proud of what we've accomplished and um, we keep on rolling. Then, thank you very much. And, um, and what really started the, the App House idea and then subsequently the App House network was a creative space. And this particular slide gives you a little impression about uh, the creativity um, when it comes to our spaces. And, um, and then this uh, QR code that you see at the bottom of the slide, if, you know, I, I would believe that most of us, you know, have a mobile phone if you wanna, you know, scan that QR code and take a closer look at the app house in, um, in, in Heidelberg, uh, that QR code uh, takes you to a 3D model that gives you a little bit of insight into that creative space, um, these environments that we have created. And then obviously, you know, um, you know, COVID and the pandemic, you know, um, you know, was, um, you know, like for everybody else, a big challenge because uh, most of the work, you know, that we have done was uh, person to person. I think about the design thinking workshops that we've been hosting, think about the on-site user research, um, you know, that is part um, of our projects, all that obviously was at stake with COVID and we quickly had to digitize, you know, like the rest of um, the, uh, the industry to, uh, to make sure that we you know, continue to stay relevant during the pandemic. And um, we've learned and we'll hear from Tina a little bit later on, you know, how we're dealing, um, you know, with um, working in a virtual environment. And, um, you know, if you remember the previous slide with, you know, just in, in 2020, we've delivered an enormous amount of success stories um, from our projects. And uh, so that's obviously an indication that it worked. But, you know, it, coming back to that slide, it all started with a creative space. And, um, you know, if you happen to be, I saw from the respondents um, in the chat that, you know, some of you are in, in Silicon Valley, you know, this is an open invitation. You know, come visit us um, if you're in Palo Alto and, um, and meet myself, Tina Sally, and, you know, obviously also Dan, who's a neighbor, um, you know, in person. <laughs> All right, so at the core of our DNA is really our human-centered approach to innovation, which um, we're depicting on this particular slide. It all starts with um, exploring the use case. And um, when it comes to the use case exploration, obviously front and center are design thinking workshops where we are um, exploring together with our customers, with participants from, uh, with end users and participants from business and, um, and IT teams, you know, what um, that top use case is that we should innovate on as part of that uh, co-innovation project that we are about to launch. As we're moving forward, um, we are uh, moving from, once we understand the use case into a discovery phase, which is basically research. Um, it uh, you know, used to happen on site. It's now happening virtually. Again, back to Tina, she's gonna talk a little bit about that later on um, in her section. But uh, when it comes to the discovery, it's, it's really important that we demonstrate empathy with the end user and that true empathy you know, really happens you know, when we are um, interviewing and, and researching with end users in their own environments. And um, after uh, researching, after carrying out all these interviews, we synthesize all these findings and move on into a design phase that we're kicking off with a design workshop um, that you know, is usually hosted in one of those creative spaces that I showed you um, on the previous slide. And then in that design workshop, we are ide ideating together again with participants from 
uh, the end user community, business and IT, how a potential solution could look like. And then together with our designers, we are prototyping um, that solution and bring it you know, to a point where we have a, an agreed upon design prototype that we then hand over still as part of that design phase to an engineering team that we're closely working with. Um, and that engineering team is then turning that design prototype into an engineering proof of concept. And throughout the start of that um, project, um, starting off with the exploration all the way through the design, you'll see that the um, importance of, of architecture really increases because there is obviously a technical component to uh, each and every one of our projects that, that we are covering in terms of um, making sure that the solutions, the ideas that we're coming up with are technically feasible. And in addition to that school of design thinking, we have um, created a school of architecture thinking where we're bringing design thinking and the uh, enterprise architecture components that are components of um, our solution together. And that together um, you know, will then be delivered um, as a proof of concept at the end of the design phase to our customers who then um, are going to turn uh, that POC um, in their own environments into, uh, into productive use that um, can happen with um, our customers' IT departments. It could be that project can be delivered through SAP services or through any other SAP partner. Hopefully that gives you a glimpse of um, our approach, but this is really the core of our DNA. That, that's what helped us stay relevant um, in, uh, uh, since um, the App House was founded um, more than seven years ago. And um, we continue being, success, being, success, being successful, focusing um, on the end user and bringing the uh, human-centered approach to every single one of our projects. Yeah, and I talked a little bit about um, design awards and the awards that we have won. We are very proud. And you know, as a matter of fact, we do have a trophy wall. So in our app house in, in Palo Alto, where we are displaying the awards that we have won, um, the, one, the awards that you see um, on this particular page are just a subset um, of what the app house as a global team has won in terms of awards you see everything that's relevant in the design community here. So you see a bunch of red dots. You also see um, awards from Germany and from other parts um, of, um, um, of the globe um, here on that slide. And, um, and that's actually um, already the segue to the next session because you know just recently we've won um, design awards for the work that we've done for Parkland Hospital. And that was, um, you know, one of Sally's most re recent projects. And uh, with that said, I'd like to hand over to Sally, who's going to, you know, introduce you to the great work that we've done for Parkland Health and Hospital System. Sally, please take it away. Thank All you very right. Much. Great. Thank you, Uva. Uh, hello, everyone. Sally Lawler Kennedy. And before COVID. I, for about three years, I led a, a, a meetup, a, it's called D Design Led Innovation uh, Meetup. And as Dan mentioned at the beginning, I'm definitely passionate about bringing, building uh, products and services that, that deliver delightful user experiences. All right. And Dan, you could, oh, perfect. So, we wanted to make sure to share with you, it's one thing to talk about a process or approach. Uh, Uva shared with you our human-centered approach to innovation, but to share a real customer example. So for us, the focus is about how do we make innovation real? So uh, I'm going to share with you a project that I worked on uh, this, this past year and also happens to be a recent uh, award, award winner. So next. Next slide. All right. So let's turn back time to March, 2020. So the Bay Area is hit with COVID. And imagine you have one large hospital with 66 ICU beds. You have no idea how many COVID patients to expect. You don't know the number of COVID beds available or total number of COVID patients in your hospital. Your critical inventory is manually tracked 
so you don't know how much personal protective equipment, PPE, or COVID test kits that are available for your staff. And in a matter of weeks, the hospital is reaching critical capacity. So what do you do? 2020 was a year that none of us imagined. Its challenges highlight the importance of innovation. The COVID pandemic threw many organizations into uncharted territory, straining IT and business resources like never before. And it led to unprecedented demands on healthcare providers. Parkland Health and Hospital System was on the front line of the battle with COVID-19. Almost overnight, Parkland needed real-time access to data and insights, such as how many COVID beds do we have? What does our supply of ventilators look like? And when will the COVID-19 cases peak in our county? And while these photos may be gloomy, they are actually cheery compared to Parkland's reality. Next slide. This was Parkland's reality. The arrival of COVID-19 threw them into crisis mode. The battle of life was being fought in the ICU, which has 66 beds. ICU quickly reached capacity, requiring two more COVID extension units to be created, adding another 100 beds. Next slide. So I wanna share with you how SAP and Parkland partnered to combat COVID-19 using real-time data and accelerating the hospital's digital transformation plan. Our motto for the collaboration was 4321, four weeks, three co-innovations, two companies, and one magnificent team. Next slide. Parkland is located in Dallas, Texas. It is the nice ninth most populated U.S. city, and it's the second largest county hospital in the state of Texas. So Parkland is designated as a county safety net hospital, meaning that they provide healthcare services to citizens of Dallas County, regardless of their ability to pay. The second map represents income levels for citizens living in Dallas County. The deep maroon represents citizens with the highest economic needs with most living 200% below the federal poverty level. And they are the most vulnerable populations at risk for poor outcomes. So in many instances, Parkland is the only option for healthcare for these residents who struggle to meet basic human needs. Next slide. So Parkland has served the community for over 125,000 years, 125,000, 125 years. Uh, and in 2014, they opened a brand new hospital, which is quite substantial. They are notable for women's health, behavioral health, trauma, and they are a regional burn center. And historically, Parkland leads the US with the highest emergency department volumes, totaling more than 240,000 visits annually, and equally impressive inpatient and outpatient volumes. Next slide. Our COVID innovations were first the COVID-19 command center, second, the critical inventory tracker, and third, the COVID-19 symptom checker. Next slide. So for these innovations, we took an analytics first approach to our strategy. So using existing technology wherever possible, we wanted to enable the executive team to make strategic decisions on operations based on the latest COVID numbers and to provide the healthcare practitioners with critical information to make decisions. So our goal was to provide exceptional care to the Dallas County residents while keeping employees safe in the midst of a health crisis and to accelerate Parkland's digital transformation journey by providing staff with the data and insights that changed how they worked. So why the four week timeline? COVID cases were expected to peak by mid-April. The target was set to have all co-innovations implemented before the peak. So with a timeline of four weeks to deliver three co-innovations, we embraced a very agile process. So no planning tools were used. We relied on small teams that met one to three times per day for check-ins, which included status update, requests for help, or showstoppers. 
there was an extremely close collaboration between SAP and Parkland. Innovation teams were small, ranging from three to five technology and design experts for rapid, flexible development. And each innovation was built and deployed in one to two weeks. Next slide. So in March, when COVID began creeping into Dallas County, the leaders at Parkland initiated their disaster plan, forming an executive centralized command center. They watched new supports in hospital communities becoming overwhelmed with patients and not having resources necessary to care for the surge in volumes. The IT team initially received data requests focused on how many arrivals were, were the, was a hospital getting that were COVID po positive. And those quickly turned and shifted to also include the supply inventory. So Parkland needed to track supplies like PPE, ventilators, lab test kits, which they traditionally did not track real time. So within four days, the analytics team responded by creating an actionable dashboard that initially was only displayed in this executive command center, but it quickly gained popularity beyond that group and is now being accessed across the organization and has even been duplicated at other hospitals in the US. Next slide. So the dashboard visuals you see in the illustration are key metrics requested by Parkland's executives. So at a glance, you can quickly see capacity, bed utilization, arrival rates, and staffing metrics, and they're looking for any constraints that could impact the business. They also enabled the Penn surge prediction model and in parallel began developing their own homegrown version. The algorithm they developed has tracked very accurately and provides a seven day forecast for inpatient and ICU volumes and ventilator usage. Additionally, using Esri integration, you can see a geomapped image of the Dallas Metroplex. This is coded to the block group level and shows positive COVID cases in the community. So based on this information, Parkland sent mobile testing units and COVID educational teams into the community. So this dashboard is accessed more than a thousand times monthly by hundreds of users and is the focal point for the daily executive meetings. Next slide. So in March, Parkland had no reliable mechanism for tracking the critical inventory supplies. Leaders were literally staffing team members to track inventory on clipboards and transcribe the data into Excel. So our solution quickly took shape when we developed a mobile and laptop enabled questionnaires to replace the, quick, the clipboards. Once the survey is completed, the form is uploaded and tracked on our dashboard in real time. Next slide. Snapshots of the survey forms are illustrated in the images. So unsolicited feedback we received from users praised how efficient and easy the process of inventory tracking became after switching to the surveys. Next slide. So Dr. Moran, which is Parkland's chief medical information officer, shared a story with me of how an employee spent 45 minutes waiting to talk with someone from the Parkland COVID call center, only to be told that his temperature was not high enough to get a COVID test. The question Dr. Moran posed to the team was what can SAP do to help the situation? So we created a self-service chatbot, which is available on the hospital's website. The chatbot screens patients for COVID symptoms, redirecting patients not in need of urgent care so that patients needing immediate access could do so in a timely manner. The chatbot also provides mobile access for COVID screening anywhere, anytime. Next slide. So the COVID symptom checker chatbot can be seen in the lower right corner of the Parkland website and both an English and Spanish version of the chatbot were built since only 27% of Parkland patients have English as a first language. Next slide. So let's take a look at the symptom checker. In less than a minute, we can screen you for COVID. In our scenario, you are a 72 year old Parkland patient 
who recently traveled to New York. You have a cough and are feeling fatigued. You wonder if you should be concerned about COVID. To start the symptom checker, you enter hello. Then you can type your responses or select the provided yes, no buttons. Dan, can you start it? So based on your age and recent high risk travel and some COVID symptoms, we recommend that you call the, the Parkland COVID call center. Next slide. Oops. All right, so Parkland made exponential gains to mature their technical capabilities and now sit three to four years ahead of where they anticipated being just one year ago. Parkland's digital transformation is significant because it allowed a small team of nurses to expand their reach to the community and communicate important information to the Dallas County citizens. The COVID-19 symptom checker was used by over 400 patients in the first two days and is now used by thousands of patients each month. The COVID command center critical inventory tracker and symptom checker enabled the Parkland executive team and the healthcare practitioners to make informed decisions and take actionable insights based on real-time data. And it's helping to move the hospital from reactive to proactive care. So can you imagine a hospital doing digital transformation in weeks or a few months rather than years? With the three co-innovations, we achieved our goal of accelerating the digital transformation while continuing to provide exceptional care to Dallas County residents and keeping employees safe. So this project was about saving lives during a health crisis. While Parkland is still in the thick of the battle with COVID, they are able to manage the crisis along with patient care and outreach in a way not possible only 12 months ago due to our co-innovations. Next slide. And in the past five, six months, we have won three different awards, uh, two for the International Customer Experience Awards and just recently the SAP Innovation Awards. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Tina. Thanks, Sally. Can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Oh, hello, my name is Tina Tuan. I've been with the SAP App House team for the past five years and where I lead the customer innovation programs. And currently I'm working on a very exciting project called App House 2.0. As Uwe mentioned earlier, we're trying to reimagine how we work uh, within the App House during and post COVID, like to create this in-person and virtual and hybrid working model. So in the next section, I'm going to share some insight that we have learned through the process. Then, yeah, I like this pro from Darwin very much. So it's not the strongest or the most intelligent that survive, but the most adaptable. And I believe we all have become very adaptable in the past year, right? When we were all hit by COVID. And, and this photo actually show how we have adapted through the past decade or so, right? On the very left-hand side, you see people sitting in the cubicle. This is when I first started working in the late 90s. Um, I was sitting in one of those cubicles. And in the middle picture is where 
uh, our Heidelberg app house looks like. So we have transformed a cubicle office to a very colorful, vibrant collaboration space. Then in the past year, we're taking everything online, even Christmas party. You can see the three of us partying virtually together. Next, then. So how, how have we been coping with the, the past year, right? As an innovation team, it's critical for us to have this face-to-face um, -face connection with our customer and our partners, right? So we, we do find one thing that works very well for us is how we establish this team ritual. For every team meeting or customer workshop, we always play. Uh, we always play a, a game, like a warm up game or a checking question, a fun checking question bef before we kick off every meeting or workshop, right? And of course, with the, the tool like Miro and Miro, those um, design thinking virtual tool really helps as well. Next then. As um, Uwe and Sally mentioned, at the first, pay, uh, the first pace of every project, we always conduct user research. And the purpose for user research is, of course, to discover the, the end user, the unmet need from them, right? So before COVID, it's, it's easier to do uh, in person. Sometimes we even fly to the, the customer's work setting to really see how they use ACP application in their setting, right? It may be a hospital, it may be an office, it may be a um, factory floor. But now we have to take user research online. That is sometimes we find really challenging when the interviewee don't turn on their video, right? So you lose all the expression, all the visual cue and the gesture. So it's, um, it's a good practice if you're doing online user research to really um, make the point, asking the participant to turn it on. Okay, then. And next, after the user research, we usually come together in the design thinking workshop, right? The purpose for the workshop is for us to review and synthesize all the findings so we can work together to generate the new solution and the to be process. And of course, um, having a workshop virtually is challenging sometimes. We used to run workshop that can be one day long, two day long, or sometimes even week, week long. Uh, we, we have also found um, like to do virtual workshop 90 minutes seem to, seem to be a good chunk, right? For a day long in-person workshop, you really want to break this up maybe in four or three session of 90 minute long. Uh, session because anything longer than that is really hard for people to focus. Next, please. And after the workshop where we have generated the new idea, in the next phase of design is we create a storyboard, right? So the storyboard is kind of like you see on the upper right, different scene um, that really help to articulate the scenario of the new journey you're trying to create, right? It's, it's especially helpful if you're creating a new service or a new process flow. And we used to do this together in person, but now we are taking uh, storyboarding also online. And ACP has this tool called ACP Scenes, uh, where I'm gonna share the QR code with you later at the end of the presentation. And that will be our gift to you to, to all take advantage of those digital tools that ACP has created. Next then. And after storyboarding, it's time for us to create a wireframe, right? So for us, ACP, we create software. So the, the user interface is really the key uh, interaction piece we have with the, the end user. 
So wireframe um, can be done in person. It can be a really fun and creative process if you can hand drawn together. Um, but during the COVID time, we have to do all the wireframing using digital tools such as Envision, Stigma, of course, collaboration online with the, the team and stakeholders. Next. And after we have the, the UI wireframe, the next step is to prototype, right? We want to bring the prototype and test with our target user. So luckily we are creating a piece of software that's easier um, to distribute and test over the internet um, virtually. So if you have something physical to test, of course it's more challenging during the COVID time. So next I'm, I'm gonna talk about like, how do we imagine going back to uh, work in the office, right? As more of us are getting vaccinated and we in the app house, we're also preparing our own reopening. And we've done uh, quite a few study, right? I think everybody's seen this all in the news now. Over 70% of the companies, they are all thinking about a hybrid model, right? Like some work from home time and some in the office time, but what is the balance? And from the recent study, we have also seen like 50% of employee would prefer spend three days or less uh, in the office, each day less than five hours. So this, Work and life balance really become like a work shift balance. Like employee is used to during the past year, like where do we work? When do we work and how do we work, right? So going back to in the office, we need to think about when does it make sense? Uh, next slide, please. Because as working from home, the biggest struggle is, um, the collaboration and the communication with your coworkers. You feel lonely and you feel you're not able to unplug, like a nine to five schedule suddenly become five to nine. And going back to the office, um, we need to think about what do we do? Um, next slide, please. How do we do the most meaningful work back in the office, right? If we are going back to the office as the, the first picture I've shown you in, in the cubicle or in the individual office, there's really no point, right? We can really do individual focused work now working from home in our own home office. So the purpose of going back to the office is to really collaborate uh, with each other. So I've heard, we have heard from our user research, people are, are thinking about, like instead of doing a out of office notification, maybe we need to flip and do a in office notification, right? When I'm in the office, I'm meeting with my coworker, I'm having a workshop with my customer. And that's the time I really don't want to be interrupted, right? And I can do all this individual home homework in, the, in, in my home office. And with that, the future of office will become a very liquid office. Uh, we, we have seen some of the company, they are redefining their office space right, really tearing down the, the cubicle, right, and really make more space such as Uwe has shown earlier, right, in the different app house location, you have this open space for you to do workshop and to really uh, reconfig um, the purpose of the day of the space into a workshop space or a meeting space or an event place, okay. So in the future, the, the office, um, will have to enable how people work in person, virtual, or in a hybrid mode. Next, please. And with that, I want to share with you, um, SAP has created this toolkit that's called the Innovation Toolkit, 
which covers uh, a different design methods, templates, really useful articles, best practice, online classes from OpenACP and other learning resources. And most importantly, all this really wonderful resources is available to you free of charge. And you can use the tools such as the ACP scenes I have shown earlier. Uh, this is a wonderful storyboarding tool. And we also provide a lot of um, good template in Mural, if you are a company that's using Mural to do your online workshop and collaboration, and we do have um, template in Mural that you can use. And there's a whole um, framework of innovation uh, process that guides you from stage to stage, as we mentioned, from discover to design to deliver. Um, the whole innovation journey. So I really want to encourage you to try this out. And with that, then we can go to the last page. And if you scan the QR code, um, that will take you to the innovation toolkit page uh, where all the resources that I have mentioned can be downloaded uh, for you use under the Creative Commons license. So with that, um, I'm gonna pause here and turn the, the stage to Dan and we can go to the next session on Q&A. Awesome, thank you, Tina. I'll just leave the, this sl uh, slide up for a moment, give you a chance to um, uh, get that QR code. And um, with that, I wanna open uh, the uh, floor up to um, some Q&A time. Uh, so I'm hoping that uh, uh, maybe something that you heard uh, during this uh, presentation, uh, you know, um, is interesting for you. Maybe you have some question, um, but we'd love to hear from you. A any thoughts, um, feedback about um, uh, some of the uh, 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 aspects of uh, the, the project that you heard or um, some of uh, Tina's thoughts on, on this next phase of, of the hybrid work situation? Uh, really curious to hear from you. Uh, and any any uh, any thoughts there? Please feel free to to ask or or put something in the chat. And and I'll stop sharing now and and let you uh, come back and we can have a little uh, discussion time. So, um, one thing I was really interested in was sort of um, you mentioned this idea of the the fluid office and and I thought one thing that really struck me was maybe now we're um, notifying people uh, when we're in the office. Um, do you have any uh, insight about that or, or any, any um, how, how, how do you think that might, might work or, or what would be the value of, of that kind of uh, in-office notification? Yeah, then I think that's a, a really good question. Um, I, I think that's, that will be a mindset change, right? Because we we need to get used to going back to the office now, right? And we, before we decide to go back to the office, we really need to think about what kind of activity is critical to do in, in the office. As we're doing the research for AppHouse 2.0, uh, one of the criteria is like, if we can go back to the office um, not wearing masks or not social distance, right? Only then it will make sense to us to host uh, in-person face-to-face workshop, right? If you are in the space having the workshop, but you still need to cover yourself and social distance is, is really impossible to run the workshop, you might as well stay virtual. Right, at least you can take off the mask and see each other. But luckily, I think in the US, we are in a much more fortunate situation with the majority of people getting vaccinated and we do see the light at the end of the tunnel and going back and having this collaboration and this workshop and in-person meeting pretty soon. 
And when we do that, we really need to start um, establishing the different mindset, right? When I'm in the office, it's the critical time for us to work together, right? When I'm working at home, I can do my individual work. And when I'm in the office, please um, don't interrupt me because those are the critical time. We are doing um, the workshop with the customer. We are doing the creative work with ourselves. So that's uh, really, uh, I think, a, a paradigm shift in comparison to what we have today. Yeah, there's a there's a great comment here in the chat um, where where um, uh, Beth Breitenbach is saying reminds me of professors having tutorial times when students can drop by the office, uh, you know, for like a, a tutorial session or or check in with the professor, right? And, yeah, and we're also um, investigating different way, right, to stay creative, and uh, you have to. Uh, wake up your five senses, right? When you are in person in the app house, it's a very collaborative, very colorful, very vibrant space where we use different things. But how might we generate the same sort of experience to accommodate in person and virtual participant together in a hybrid setting, right? So we were ideating about like, can we send them a care package, right, for the people who cannot be on site, how do they generate the same five senses um, to trigger the creativity? Do we send them a scented candle they can light up? Or can, can we send them a little swag, like a little teddy bear thing they can touch, right, different texture? So we, we, we are like exploring all these different ideas to help bring in the the five senses and really bridge the gap of the in-person and the virtual people together in the hybrid setting. Any any surprises or or kind of uh, you know what's what have maybe surprised you about that works well in the virtual format or or anything um, uh, about working virtually with customers that you've found um, maybe helpful or useful um, uh, or surprising. Uh, in that kind of virtual interaction, A any um, any insights there? I mean, maybe an insight from my side. Um, you know, and that comes back to the slide I showed you a little bit earlier. We've been surprisingly successful back in 2020 in terms of the projects that we, that we were pulling off. All of them, of course, you know, virtually, but. You know, in terms of, um, you know, what we've accomplished, you know, it was definitely a record breaking year um, in terms of number of success stories completed, um, um, awards won, Sally's project, you know, was obviously one of them that we completed back in 2020, but there were many others. So that was, you know, for myself as a as a manager, one of the most surprising outcomes that the pandemic, you know, for the field in which we are in didn't slow us down. I would also echo what what Uva said that the Park Lane story that I shared with you uh, end to end that was completely done virtual uh, as a team. Um, all the, the people from SAP that that were working on it, we had never done a complete end to end virtual project. Uh, we, we didn't have a choice, so we were forced into it. I'm, if the pandemic wasn't happened, we would have continued work as we always did before, which really uh, I'm sure would have been on site. Uh, so that was a, a learning experience for us. Like we were figuring out and, you know, lo and behold, we, we did learn that um, we could deliver uh, great work and be all completely virtual. Um, and, and the team being from all over the, the US, some even international, and we, we've never met, it, met each other face to face. I think that's awesome because, you know, that's, and that's really, uh, I think, a great sort of positive note to maybe close the session on, which is that, you know, sometimes we, we get in these circumstances where, where it's, it's chaotic and, right, we don't expect this, but we're forced to work a certain way. And I think you demonstrated in, in a fantastic way what's really possible 
and and um, uh, showcase that in an award-winning design. So I think that's that's really cool. And I'm and I'm really glad that we had a chance to bring this uh, project and and this this team, the App House, uh, to attention today. I, I hope you'll all take advantage of um, of the QR codes and and the uh, the material. Um, Scenes is a great tool for storyboarding. And as Uva said, um, you know. Please stop by the app house sometime. We're located in Palo Alto, um, just around the corner or very close to the, the Hana house uh, and, and um, uh, check out the innovation space and um, meet some of, some of uh, the folks here. Uh, so on behalf of uh, Uva and, and Sally and Tina uh, and Colin, then I'd just like to say thanks everybody for coming today. Um, and uh, we'll be uh, hosting another Design Bites uh, Hopefully at the end of July or August, um, the, the topic we're planning on right now is uh, something around um, some aspects of inclusive design and, and what that means uh, both for what work we're doing here at SAP and also um, how that um, impacts uh, what we're doing and the way we approach uh, design work uh, for all of our products. So it's a really interesting topic. Uh, and I hope to have a, a, a really interesting discussion-based uh, session on uh, that topic uh, coming up in the future. Um, thanks, everybody. Uh, as I see, there's a, there's a survey, um, so please take a chance to fill it out. Thanks for coming, everyone, and thanks again to the App House team for your great presentation. Take Thank care. Thank you, Dan. It was a pleasure. Have a good Thank weekend. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Colin. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, Good Dan. Session. Thank you. Bye, bye. Take care. Thank you. Oh, hey, Dan. Yeah. I have a question. What was my video showing when I? Because when I was talking later.